So the second talk this morning, um, Mario Garcia Fernandez will tell us about copy uh, invariants. In so thank you very much. So it's uh, a great pleasure and, and honor to be here speaking in the occasion of uh, Oscar Garcia Prada's 60th uh, birthday. So what I'm going to talk about today is a joint work with one of my PC students, Raul Gonzalez Molina, who is here in the in the audience. And even though this is a bit uh, off topic of the of the uh, things that Oscar has been doing in his research, mm, our work has been very much inspired by by what I did on the one hand in my PhD thesis with Oscar Garcia Prada and Luis Alvarez Consul here in Madrid more than 10 years ago, and uh, also by actually the theory of Higgs bundles and harmonic metrics, and you will see. So let me start with a, with a family picture. So this, this picture was taken a long time ago in a, during the, the uh, 60th birthday conference of, of Nigel Hitching, which took place here in Madrid with uh, Sir Michael Atilla, Nigel, Oscar, and and the, and the descendants of Oscar at the time. So I apologize to Emilio and Anna because they are not in this picture. So uh, let me zoom, zoom out this, this uh, picture a little bit to see what the young people in the audience were, were thinking about. So at the time, there were several students of Oscar all in the same room in Serrano in the 1001 office. And uh, most of them were studying things related to, to the theory of Higgs bundles. So, for example, Roberto Rubio here was studying modular spaces for of, of Higgs bundles for the real L group E6 in relation to the Cayley transform that you heard about from Olivier Bicard yesterday. There was also Marina Logares who was speaking, or he was, uh, she was thinking, she was studying uh, parabolic bundles for uh, um, uh, parabolic Higgs bundles for the real group UPQ, as you heard in the in the lecture by by Carlos Simpson. Then uh, there was uh, Marta Aparicio, and she was studying uh, modular spaces for SOPQ Higgs bundles. Uh, the, the thesis project of Marta was extremely, extremely difficult. And over the years, this led to this important breakthrough uh, that uh, occurred recently about counting higher Tengmuller components for, for uh, uh, these modular spaces in work of Oscar, Marta, and collaborators. Then there was uh, Álvaro Anton, uh, who was studying a curious phenomenon uh, in modular space of his bundles? Let me picture his. Uh, <laughs> his <laughs> this is probably like this. So, this was about uh, a triality phenomenon on, on modular space of his bundles related to involution on modular spaces, and which I have pictorially uh, put it like this. So, already in this, in this uh, picture, you see how the topics of the PhD students of Oscar at the time have, been, uh, have become hot topics now. And uh, this, I guess, shows how influential the work of Oscar has been over the years in, in, this, in this subject. So on the one hand, it was me here. I was a young mathematician at the time, which was studying something completely different, some equations in, in Keller geometry under the supervision of Oscar and Luis, which had nothing to do with Higgs bundles. So I was the only one in the, in the office not studying Higgs bundles. So these equations were for a Keller metric on a manifold and a connection uh, on, on a bundle over it. The, they were inspired by the model program for bundles and varieties in algebraic geometry, and also by, in the spirit, by unification field theories in, in physics. So at the time, because there was all this uh, uh, inspiration coming from physics, I was a bit obsessed with finding a physical interpretation of, of the equations. And uh, I started digging into, into the physics lecture, so I was not finding really anything related to, to this. Actually, the, the most intriguing term is, is this term here. This is the scalar curvature of the killer metric. And you have this other term, which, I mean, this parenthesis really mean trace. Okay, so you have a, a representative of the first Pontryagin class of the bundle, which appears uh, somehow in the equations. Then uh, after, over the years, I, I came through this other equation, which is this Greenness bars anomaly cancellation equation in, in a string theory. And a priori, the only reason I, I got interested into this is because I saw these Pontryagin terms appeared in the formula. And I was curious about what was the geometry behind this equation and whether this could help me in understanding the physical aspects of, of my physics problem. So what is the, the geometry underlying this equation? So you have a pair of connections on bundles over a manifold. And the difference of these Pontryagin terms is the exact, so there is a three form in the picture. So if I forget about the bundles, 
I just take a three form on a manifold and I assume it to be closed, what type of geometry does this give us? One thing we can do is to consider the Lie algebra of vector fields on the manifold and then to construct a central extension of this Lie algebra. So the center is going to be the abelian Lie algebra of close two forms on the manifold. And then I'm going to have here a group H, a Lie algebra H, which is given by first vector field and two form. Sometimes this is called a B field, such that the Lie derivative with respect to S, X of the closed uh, three form minus D of B equals to zero. So alternatively, because H is closed, this can be written as D of IX H minus B equals to zero. So you can ask yourself, what is the geometry underlying this? And if we think of these asymmetries of, of some object, then it turns out that the natural object you need to consider is something which appeared time ago in, in the world by Nigel Hitchin in general geometry, which is uh, the tangent plus the cotangent bundle endowed with a suitable bracket and, and pairing. And these are the symmetries. So what happens now if you have this more complicated equation? Well, first, let me simplify it. Let me just drop one of the terms and just keep this one. So the first thing I have is a principal bundle over my manifold, say it's a bundle for some group K. And then I have a three form, which is no longer to be closed. And I have a connection on P, and then I have this intriguing equation, PH plus trace of FA, which FA equals to zero. Then similarly as before, what you can do with this is to construct a Lie algebra extension, but now instead of taking vector fields on the manifold, what you can take is the Lie algebra of uh, sections of the Adija algebra. You take PP mod by K, you take sections of this, and then you construct an extension. Again, by the abelian Lie algebra of closed two forms on the manifold. And uh, let me go here. This G, if I split, because I have a connection, if I split TP, the tangent bundle of P mod K using the connection as the tangent bundle of M plus uh, the adjoint of P, then this calligraphic G is given by triples X, a vector field, S, a section of the adjoint bundle, B, a two form, such that the following combination is closed. I hope you see from there. Okay. And yeah, this was uh, a curious thing I, I discovered, which uh, encounters or meets with, with the theory um, introduced by Nigel Hitchin. You can also um, you can also um, re or ask yourself what is what is this the algebra, the symmetries of of which object, and then what you realize is you need to extend the previous picture about the tangent plus the cotangent bundle by introducing the adjoint into the picture. So instead of having general geometry for tangent plus the cotangent bundle, you have this other bundle, which is more complicated, which depends on the principal bundle over the manifold, and for which these calligraphy G, Lie algebra, are the natural symmetries. OK, so as I said, I got interested into this because these Pontragian terms appeared in the, in the equations in my thesis. Uh, at, after some time, I, I realized that uh, this was really nothing to do with, with the equations I was studying, but uh, still this, uh, this equation coming from physics was deserving some attention. And then I started asking the question of, okay, what are, because I come from complex geometry, what are the natural class of canonical metrics which accommodate this equation here? And then the, the answer is this uh, system of equations which appears in the, in the string theory literature as a background for, for the theoretic string. So let me give you, let me 
go through the system slowly. So what you have is a Calabria, and then you have a pair of polymorphic vector bundles, V1 and V0 over X. You have unknowns, which are given by a Hermitian metric on X, and a pair of Hermitian metrics on V0 and V1. So G is Hermitian, and in particular, I can construct the corresponding Hermitian 4, which is of type 1. And then the system has three types of equations. The first line is something familiar, thanks also to, to Richard's uh, lecture. So this is just the Hermite Einstein equation for the two Hermitian metrics on the bundles. The second equation is more um, maybe not so familiar to the to the audience. This is called the conformally balanced equation. So it tells you that your metric is going to be up to conformal factor co-closed. And then the third equation is just a particular instance of this greenness bars anomaly cancellation equation that I was telling you about in the previous in the previous slide. Okay, so what are the, the lessons we learn from these equations here? So if we look at three, the first thing we notice is that because we are solving the this greenish bars anomaly cancellation equation with a particular choice of, of three form DC of omega, typically if I have a solution of these equations, these are going to be non-killer. Okay. So the metric is non-killer. And because we are potentially in a non-killer manifold, then one has to be very careful about cohomologies. And actually. This thing, which I stated in a, in a curseless form, so you have two vector bundles because of this equation, the two second chain characters need to agree, but need to agree in which cohomology. Actually, if you have an uncle manifold, you have several cohomologies to the possible cohomologies to be defined, and this is the right one, the Borchen cohomology. So the Borchen cohomology of the manifold is defined as the kernel of the D operator in PQ degree, modulo the image of the del del bar operator. Okay, so so far so good. We have these equations here which tell me what are supposed to be the canonical metrics underlying this greenness bars anomaly cancellation equation. So the main piece of motivation for these <coughs> Halle-Strominger equations come, yeah. So in, in that, you never really use the non-vanishing of, of the, the of omega capital omega. Of big omega, you mean? Or? I mean, the fact that it's a Calabi-L. Oh yeah, yeah, you need to, oh yeah, yeah, let me, okay. This is a good point. <clears throat> Let me, yeah, yeah, you need it for, you need to define a spinner and reduce autonomy. So I didn't comment on the second equation. Let me do it now. Thanks Richard for the, for the question. So what is the geometry behind this conformally balanced condition? So if you have a solution of, of two, two means this equation there, the conformally balanced equation, then this is equivalent to having the Lie form, which is defined as J of the star of omega to be minus D of the log of the norm of omega. And precisely because this omega is nowhere vanishing, this is the same as the holonomy of the bismuth connection of the Hermitian metric to be contained in SUN. Okay, and the way you, con you construct the parallel section in the canonical bundle is rescaling capital omega by the norm of omega. So you really use it. I mean, for at least for the geometric interpretation of, the, of these equations, yeah. Okay, so this gives you a generalization of the Calabria condition for the metric in the non-killer non set. Okay, so as I was saying, the main piece of uh, motivation for, for this equation came from this geometrization proposal Geometrization program by introduced by Yao and, and collaborators, also Fu Sheng and Li. Uh, so the idea is the following. So what they say is that um, in order to geometrize treatable surgeries in algebraic geometry, one may be able to need some natural non-killer geometry, and this is uh, potentially the, the right answer. So 
the thing is as follows. So you say you have that an algebraic uh, Calabria of threefold projected, which a bunch of curves embedded on it. If the normal bundles of these curves are isomorphic to O minus one plus O minus one, then you can do a contraction of the curves. And then if there is a non-trivial relation in homology, you can do, or you obtain a, a singular Calabria and then you can do a smoothing. Obtain some non, I mean, some, some smooth Calabria again. So in this process, you are killing second, uh, second homology of the, of the Calabria and you may end up in a non-killer manifold. And these, these topologies are classified as these direct sums of copies of S3 cross S3. So the question in this, through these uh, transitions is what happens with the Calabria metric? So in the original manifold, you may have, you, you have a, a keller ricci flat metric, but after the transition, you may end up, you may end up in a manifold which is non-Keller and therefore where, where does the Keller metric go? And the, the, yeah, the proposal by, by Yao and collaborators is that after the transition, somehow you should be able to produce a solution of this where the two bundles are supposed to appear from the tangent bundle and the Hermitian metric is closely related to the uh, keller ricci flat metric before, before the transition. Okay, so far so good. This is one piece of motivation. Two other pieces of motivation come from uh, in some of the descendants of Oscar, the, the new generation, uh, Andoni de Arriba and Roberto Tellez here in the audience. So another piece of motivation for the study of these equations is related to an extension of mirror symmetry to um, a conjectural extension of mirror symmetry where the Calabi-Jaus are replaced by a pair given by a calabi manifold and a holomorphic vector bundle over it, satisfying suitable constraints. And our approach to, to this question in work with Alvarez Consul and, and Andoni is uh, via vertex algebras. So conjecturally, out of a solution of these halle strominger equations, one should be able to construct a vertex algebra uh, associated to the pair XV and um, with a suitable enhanced structure, which enables you to study this, this mirror symmetry. Uh, thing. And then the other piece of motivation for these equations is uh, if you are an algebraic geometer, you want to think of what is the algebraic object underlying a solution of this, trying to pursue as some sort of donaldson ullenbeck gel theorem. And for a while we had a, a more simplified version of what the right object is, but now we are pretty convinced, thanks to the work of, of Roberto Tellez, who is doing his PhD with Luis and I here, um, that the, the right picture is given by the following. It's going to be a multiplicative gerb over a complex group, which is acting on a principal bundle is still uh, equipped with a holomorphic gerb, which is also a sister gerb. Okay, and this is the type of objects that one should study under moduli spaces in order to uh, hopefully one day prove a donaldson gerb theorem for these equations. Okay, so these are just as for the motivations for the, for the study of this. Let me go for the main point of this talk, which is to try to say something about this conjecture by, by Yao. <clears throat> so this is stated in a slightly stronger form than the, the original conjecture by Yao, but let me not, not mention that. So essentially, uh, this conjecture is motivated by this geometrization program of Yao and collaborators. So what this tells you is that if you do a conifold transitions on an algebraic Calabria threefold, after the transitions, there are no obstructions for stopping equations. This is what the, the conjecture is telling you, okay? And a more, more, uh, um, yeah, in more concrete terms, what you have is a Calabria manifold of complex dimension three. Let me stick to, to this case. You have V0 and V1 holomorphic vector bundles over X, such that this uh, equality in Bocher homology is satisfied. This is just, recall, the topological condition for solving this anomaly cancellation equation. Assume that there is a balance metric omega zero on X. So balance here means that omega zero squared is D closed, or if you want omega zero is co-closed, and take its class in, in Bocher homology. And assume further, as in, in Richard's lecture, that V0 and V1 are B slow polystable. So to define the degree of shift shifts, you only need actually this, this type of object, this, this balance class. So you can you can copy and paste the usual definition for holomorphic vector bundles in this possibly non-killer setup. And assume further that the degrees, degrees are zero. Then this triple admits a solution of the halle strominger system with this prescribed balance class. Okay, so because I have this conformally balanced equation here, Oh, it's here. 
then I can take its com its cohomology class, and actually this makes sense in in Bocheron cohomology. So again, to repeat in a in a nutshell, what happens is that or the, the, the idea of this equation, the idea of this, of this conjecture is that the only obstructions to solving these equations are the, the classical ones that we already see uh, from, from algebraic geometry. Okay, so the, the obvious topological ones, plus the fact that the manifold needs to admit a balance metric, plus the fact that you need to have this, uh, this slope stability due to the donaldson only major theorem of the two panels. Okay, so, is this true or not? Well, we, we suspect that it's not, it's not uh, true. We suspect that there are contra examples to the conjecture, that there are hidden obstructions we have not been able to see so far. And part of the motivation comes from a recent moment map interpretation of these equations here in work with uh, Roberto Rubio and, and Carl Tipler in a paper which will appear this year in, in JDG. So here we have written the moment map. And let me just... Uh, spend two minutes to explain you why this implies the Hall-Strominger equations and what is the meaning of this term here. So this is the Lie algebra term. And uh, if you take a look on the, on the Lie algebra I wrote before, I wrote a Lie algebra coming out of the greenish barth anomaly cancellation equation, which is given by triples, a vector field, sections of the adjoint, and a B field, satisfying these equations here. Okay, so this combination is the closed. One way of solving uh, this condition uh, naively is to declare the B field minus this plus this to be the exact. One thing which is important for our story is that I want you to think of these equations as a gauge theory. And therefore, vector field should play really no role in the picture. So if I just take the corresponding Lie algebra where X is zero, then my B field can be taken to be D of a one form and minus two S trace of H phi, And this, it will give me an element in this Lie algebra. And this is precisely the type of term which appears in here. Okay, so these are really, this is just the B field, the integral of the B field against this, this term omega N minus one and multiplied by the, by the norm of the holomorphic body four. And now if I have the moment map equals to zero, then T and S are free parameters. So if I take T to zero and I write S zero and S one, this will give me that both A zero and A one are Hermitian young mix, are Hermitian anything. So this gives me this first condition. And on the other hand, if I drop S zero and S one, D of T which this integrated equals to zero by integration my parts gives me that D of this quantity needs to be zero, which gives me this second bit in this Hall-Strominger equations. Okay, so this, this tells you that these equations have a natural moment map interpretation as you heard about the, from, from the Edmar Salomon uh, yesterday, infinite dimensional moment map conditions. And, and this led us to, to think that uh, this Yahoo conjecture is, is, not, uh, is not true. There are hidden obstructions that we don't, we don't see. So what can we do in order to find these obstructions? So instead of, Instead of using this moment map, I'm going to use a different principle, which I actually learned during my, my PhD thesis. So one in a, in a nutshell, or yes, to the general idea is that some complicated equations in, in mathematical physics can sometimes be recasted in terms of simpler equations in a more complicated space. And a prominent example of this, of this principle is given by Oscar Garcia Prada's thesis, where he is able to prove that the, the vortex equation on a Riemann surface can be interpreted as the Hermitian equation on the product of the Riemann surface cross P1 if you take some equivariant ansatz. So I told you that our problem is a gauge theory. So instead of complicating the space, what I'm going to do is to complicate the bundles, to complicate the bundle in the picture. So let me go for it. So let's just start with a solution of the anomaly equation on a triple given by a complex manual of V0 and V1. So this equation here. And then I take this bundle as a smooth complex vector bundle. This is just the tangent one zero plus endomorphism of V0, endomorphism of V1 plus the uh, 
holomorphic cottage in manner, just as a smooth bundle. And then I construct this, this complicated formula for a Dolbo operator. If you take a close look at this, just the first line, give me the Dolbo operator of the Atija, of the holomorphic Atija algebraid of the, of the principal bundle given by V0 plus V1, the bundle of frames. While this second uh, equation here, this pairing, is resembles very much the one which appears in, in general geometry. And now the, the small lemma is that the previous formula defined a holomorphic orthogonal bundle. Uh, so this, this d bar zero is integrable, it's equals to zero. And actually this thing is, is holomorphic. Okay, so out of a solution of this third equation in the system, we have constructed a more complicated holomorphic bundle given by this key, which is an extension of the Atija of the holomorphic Atija algebra. And now assume now that this thing further satisfies the full system of equations, also one and two. Then we define a pseudo Hermitian metric using this splitting, given just by this block diagonal, uh, block diagonal um, form. <clears throat> Notice that this metric is pseudo Hermitian precisely because of this term here, this V0 bundle. Precisely tells me that my metric, if the, base, if the rank of V0 is bigger than zero, this metric is not going to be positive definite. And then the result, the unifying principle I was looking for, is this uh, result with Raul Gonzalez Molina, which tells you that if your triple omega H0, H1 is a solution of the full system of equations of the Halle Stromio system, then this metric G, which is pseudo Hermitian, is actually Hermitian Einstein. And uh, I mean, this is an innocent looking proposition, but actually in the calculations, one has to do almost all the, almost all the equalities I know in Hermitian geometry is pretty hard to, to check. <clears throat> okay, so some comments about this, this result. So firstly, let me draw an analogy with something that you know. So, and one of the first instances of uh, relation between keller einstein metrics and stability conditions is, is given by this chain of, of equalities. So suppose you have a keller einstein metric on a manifold, then just by taking the Hermitian metric on the tangent bundle given by this Keller metric, the tangent bundle emits a Hermitian einstein metric. And because of that, the tangent bundle is polystable with respect to the Keller class of the Keller metric. So I want you to think of this result as an analog of this chain of implications, but with the caveat that the metric we have is pseudo Hermitian, and therefore this last step is not there. So we don't have any relation a priori with, with polystability. Okay, just because we are solving the Hermitian in equation, but for a, a, a split um, for some crazy signature metric. So there is no way to directly use the national Lembeck Jow to relate Halle Strominger system to some stability condition for this orthogonal one. So the other things I, I should mention about this result is on the one hand, it is inspired by a physical result by De La Osa, Larforce, and Svans. They prove a similar result in seven dimensions. There is an analog of these halle stromiger equations for, for G2 structures, and they prove that the corresponding equations are equivalent to some G2 instanton condition to all orders in perturbation theory. So they, they, in perturbation theory, they actually find a match. But what we have actually proved in complex for complex manifolds is that these equations here are strictly weaker than the halle stromiger system. And there are very interesting results about this. So there are some examples by Raul Gonzalez, which is here, uh, about finding solutions of these equations, which are not solutions of the halle stromiger system on manifolds, which are not Calabia. And hopefully this will appear before Christmas in the archive. Okay, so let me go for, for the abstraction. So I told you that there is no way of producing a, a naive stability condition out of this uh, unifying principle that I told you about. But still, and maybe we can use some of the ideas of this moment map picture for constructing obstructions. So one of the things I learned during my, my PhD thesis was how to construct Futaki invariants and the principles underlying this, this Futaki invariants. And one of the things that you realize when you go to to the finite dimensional construction of the Futaki invariance. So you have a, a Keller manifold, you have a Hamiltonian action for a compact group. Then uh, there is some character of, of the Lie algebra of uh, automorphisms of the isotropy of, of a point for the complex group. And you realize that to construct this character, the only thing you need is that the symplectic structure is pre symplectic 
and it's of type one one, but you don't need it to be killer. You don't need it to be positive. So revolving around this idea, we have proved the following lemma, which we plan to apply to, to our uh, unifying principle. So suppose that you have a compact complex manifold of arbitrary dimensions and Q is a holomorphic vector bundle over X. Take a balanced class, uh, sorry, a Boitzian class in N minus one, N minus one degree. Then this map going from the Lie algebra of holomorphic endomorphisms of Q into C, taking just by integrating the trace of phi times the curvature of some metric G against a representative of the, of the, of the class is independent of choices. And in a very, it, it is interesting that it does not only not depend on the choice of representative for this class B, but also it does not depend on the choice of pseudo Hermitian metric G on Q. So you don't need it, the metric uh, calligraphic G to be this big G, you don't need to be positive for this invariant to be well defined. So what I mean by FG is the curvature of the churn connection associated to this pseudo Hermitian metric. If you have a pseudo Hermitian metric on a holomorphic vector bundle, it has an associated churn connection just from the fact that it is non-degenerate. So in particular, if you solve this Hermitian equation for a representative of, of my class B, then this Futaki invariant is, is zero. So the other piece of information that I need in order to construct the obstructions for these equations is Okay, out of a solution of the equations, I have constructed a complicated holomorphic orthogonal bundle, but how many I can construct? So this is this classification result with Roberto Rubio and, and Carl Tipler. So suppose that you have a complex manifold endowed with a holomorphic vector, with a pair of holomorphic vector bundles with zero one, so that this second chain character equation is satisfied. Okay, so the two chain characters agree, the second chain characters agree. Then this is the only obstruction for constructing this holomorphic orthogonal bundles that I was telling you about before. So then there exists a canonical family of holomorphic orthogonal bundles given by holomorphic extensions of the Atija algebra of the, of the bundle of, uh, of the split bundle B0 plus B1. And this is canonically defined. And let me now go into what is this, this parameter space. This is a finite space. The way we construct this canonical family is using some techniques from, from general geometry but this is actually not important for us. The only important thing for us is that this is described in terms of some natural maps in cohomology for non killer manifolds. And if your manifold is, uh, is DD bar or satisfies the, um, satisfies the DD bar lemma or is algebraic, for instance, or Keller, then this parameter space is just a point. So it means that out of, a sol out of these two bundles, I can canonically construct a unique Q. Okay, so out of, out of a solution of this equation in cohomology, I can construct this family this canonical family of orthogonal bundles given by extensions. And now this is uh, the main theorem I wanted to, to show you in collaboration with uh, Raul González Molina, another one of the new generation of Fox Oscar's descendants. So suppose that you have a Calabio manifold and dealt with a holomorphic, uh, holomorphic vector bundles with 0 and B1, satisfying this thing, and assume that you have a solution of the Hall Strominger equations with this prescribed balance class. In Boitzian cohomology, then there exists a point in this family of orthogonal bundles such that the associated Futaki invariant is identically zero. Okay, I call this a stringy because of this year picture that I told you at the beginning in relation to Roberto Tellez's uh, thesis. But uh, let's, this is just a, a Futaki invariant applied to the Hermite-Einstein equation. Uh, with, the, with the additional fact that we need to classify all these possible uh, holomorphic uh, uh, orthogonal bundles in order to, to make this uh, uh, yeah, workable. So I should emphasize that this is the first known obstruction to these equations, which goes beyond the polystability of the two bundles and the balance property of X. So if you have a compact complex manifold, uh, arbitrary, it may be non killer it may be non-balanced, sorry, but if, if it covers a balanced metric and these two bundles are polystable, then Jao's conjecture tells you that the, uh, there should admit a, a solution of the Hallestromic equations, provided that this is satisfied. So this tells you that potentially this is not the case. So what, how can we use this to disprove the version of Jao's conjecture that I presented at the beginning of my talk? Well, what you need to find is, uh, what you need to find is a pair of bundles which are polystable with respect to a balanced class, and says that all the Futaki invariants for all elements in the family are non-zero. 
and then it cannot be any any solution because if we have a solution then we can construct one of these one element in this family and this will have funny in Futaki invariant so we need to obstruct all the possible Futaki invariants coming from all possible uh, holomorphic orthogonal bundles that you construct out of this uh, equality on on chain characters and another interesting fact is that if your manifold is DD bar or algebraic then uh, it's, it's sufficient to check this condition just for one Futaki invariant because there is only one extension is canonical up to isomorphism. Yeah. So, but the Futaki invariant depends on omega as well. So basically, right? um, you mean in the holomorphic volume form or the no the small omega? Yeah, yeah. It depends through through the through the balance class. No, no, but it only depends on the on the on the balance class of the solution. So, so suppose that you have a solution, then I can construct one of these holomorphic orthogonal bundles, which carries a pseudo Hermitian Hermitian symmetry with that balance class, with the balance class of the solution. Therefore, this Futaki invariant needs to vanish. So if I obstruct the Futaki invariants, if, if I show that the Futaki invariants are non-zero, then there is no such solution on this for these choices of bundles and balance class. Okay. Okay, good. So let me give you an example. So we have been able to construct examples for which some of the elements in this family of holomorphic orthogonal bundles have non vanishing Futaki invariant, but uh, some other elements in the family do have vanishing Futaki invariant. So we have not proved yet the, the conjecture by the a strong version of the conjecture by Yao, but at least we have shown that these Futaki invariants are non, non trivial. So consider a one parameter family of pairs of real Lie algebras and complex structures, linear complex structures on the on the Lie algebra determined by this structure equation. So here, the omega i's are a basis for the one zero bit of, uh, of this real Lie algebra. So this is enough by taking a real basis to determine the, the structure equations of the underlying uh, real nilpotent Lie algebra. Then I can integrate GB to a simply connected group big GB, take a co-compact lattice and construct an ill manifold. Extending the complex structure by left invariance, then I get a, a complex manifold, a complex nil manifold, which is actually Calabi-Yau. So the holomorphic volume form is given by omega 1, which omega 2, which omega 3. Then I'm going to consider a bundle, just one bundle, which is a line bundle. And instead of defining through holomorphic geometry, I'm going just to define it through forms. So what I do is to, to take a 1 1 form, which is a D close and which has integral periods with respect to this lattice. And this can be this can be done. Just by taking this, this specific choice of forms for M and P in set three. And then one can check, because what things we know about the, the cohomology of Neil manifolds that the second chain character of this line bundle is zero in Bochern, in Bochern cohomology. So I have uh, all the conditions that I need for, for trying to solve the Halle Strominger system for this V0, because I, I tell you that this manifold is actually balanced. So the proposition is that in the previous picture, there exists a balance class in this, in this nil manifold, and some element in the canonical family of uh, holomorphic orthogonal bundles associated to V0, because this is zero. So in particular, uh, I have only one bundle here, so I, I can construct this family of holomorphic orthogonal bundles says that the degree of this is zero. This is required for solving the Hermitian Einstein equation with, with zero lambda. And says that the Futaki invariant is different from zero. Okay. Unfortunately, for other elements in the same family, the Futaki invariant vanishes. Okay. But uh, this is so far so good. This, this is what we, what, we, what we have. So there is a very, what, what, does, what does it mean that for some other elements it vanishes? So there is a way of being very precise about what it means to have a solution of this system on a specific queue rather than the bundle. So saying in which queue we are having the solution. And what this is telling us is this for some of the queues in the family, there is no solution of these Halle Strominger equations. So any, any questions about this? Uh, I was just about to ask, are you about to be yeah, yeah, and this because everything is invariant reduces to linear algebra, and you can actually well, Raoul has calculated this with Mathematica has found all all the possible solutions in this set of us. Yeah. 
Sí, ya. Yeah. So, for the classes in which the Pythagorean Marian band exists, we have for all of them solution code for some inner system. So, what the Pythagorean Marian is saying in this example is that he can capture exactly which balance, um, which uh, families um, are structured and, and those who are not have solutions. Yeah. So, yeah, in, in this case, it really helps to to say which balance classes are going to have solutions, which are which not, which queues are going to have solutions, and you can actually describe, say, the, the moduli space of these equations by by means of of this invariant. So this this so far we haven't been able to disprove just conjecture using this invariant, but at least we have used it to to give very explicit descriptions of, of moduli spaces uh, in terms of of these nil manifolds. Okay. So my next uh, thing is what happens for this geometrization program? What is the relation with, with the geometrization program in, in terms of this invariant? So which new information gives you? Well, actually, if you, if I told you, if you have a, a DD bar manifold, or specifically you have an algebraic Calabi-Yau, then um, out of a, a solution of, of this Bianchi identity in cohomology, you can construct a unique holomorphic orthogonal bundle. There is a unique one, there is a canonical one. And for you, I have a unique Putaki invariant. So potentially this obstructs the existence of solution, but there is a recent result unpublished by Collins, Picard, and Yao, which tells you that if you have a, an algebraic Calabria threefold and you take balanced classes, which are squares of Keller classes and which are very big, then you can solve the system. So it means that for all, essentially for all balanced classes, which are the square of Keller classes, you can solve the system and the Futaki variant does vanish. So where, how can we find balanced classes which are not the square of Keller classes. And actually they come from naturally from conifold transitions. So one way of producing balanced classes, which are not the square of Keller classes by a result of Fu and Chao, who, who characterize the balance cone of, of an algebraic Calabria threefold is by taking uh, a bunch of rational curves, contracting the curves and pulling back an ample class from the singular, from the singular guy. These, these uh, classes are going to be uh, nef and big, and they prove that they are actually balanced. So what this tells you is that precisely, potentially, this foot game variant is obstructing uh, the existence of solutions for balanced classes, which are precisely at the boundary of the Keller cone. And the boundary of the Keller cone is, is shared with, for example, if you do a flop, the boundary of the Keller cone, you can identify it with the boundary, well, one of the phases of the boundary of the Keller cone of the, of the flop. And if you do a, a conifold transition, there is also a way of uh, reassemble or uh, assembling these these uh, Keller cones in a in a natural way. So this is really pointing towards the right the right direction. So potentially there are more more obstructions than we expected, and this geometrization program of Yao uh, needs to be needs to be refined. Okay, so far so good. So how how much time do I have? A little bit less than two minutes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So uh, the last thing I wanted to to tell you is about the relation with stability and harmonic metrics. And this is, as I said, this is very much inspired by, by the theory of Higgs bundles and the work of Oscar in, in, in orthogonal groups. So as I mentioned before, our solution of the Hermitian Einstein equation that we have constructed out of a solution of these uh, Hall-Strominger equations is pseudo-Hermitian. And therefore, a priori, there is no relation to stability. As a matter of fact, if you try to prove that this orthogonal bundle is a slow polystable, you are going to fail because there is always a canonically uh, isotropic subshift given by the holomorphic cotangent bundle, which destabilizes. And the fact that this Q is a split is closely related to the fact that the solution is scalar and the two metrics in the bundles are flat. So in general, if you have a non keller solution with non-flat metrics on the bundles, then this is not going to be a split. And therefore, we cannot expect that a slow polystability is the right answer. So instead, because we have this uh, pseudo Hermitian metric, what we can do is to take the churn connection of this pseudo Hermitian metric and think of it as an orthogonal connection and try to find a right notion of, of harmonic metric for this. And this is the, the content of this definition. So motivated by a hyperkeller moment map construction, we introduce the following notion of harmonic metric. So let me first go through the definition and then I tell you about what is this hyperkeller model. So assume that you have a solution of, of these equations, then we can construct a holomorphic orthogonal bundle Q with a pseudo Hermitian metric G and I can take the associated churn connection. 
then we say that a positive definite permission metric H on Q is harmonic if the following equation is satisfied, where this H and nabla, this Fc and nabla H are defined through the following principle. This is very similar to the theory of Higgs bundle. So you take the churn connection and you decompose it into the unique unitary connection plus a, a Higgs, plus a Higgs field. Okay. And now the equations are that up to a defect, Fc, the Higgs field is is nabla H star close with respect to the, the connection is, is, uh, yeah, is co-close. Eh? And uh, this defect here has to do with the fact that our metric is not balanced. If the metric were balanced, then I would drop this term because this is the leaf form of the metric. This is J of D star of omega. So uh, in this picture, this thing will be a D, will be the, the metric dual of a D exact uh, 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 one form. So why do I need this balance condition? This, this equation, as I've written, is conformally invariant, precisely because I have added this leaf form term. So the, the reason why I need uh, this conformal, uh, this, this equation, this correct term is because in order to have a, an interpretation of these equations and to prove the next term that I'm going to show you, you need a hyperkeller moment map interpretation of the equations. But this hyperkeller moment of interpretation only appears if the metric you are you have on the manifold is balanced. So the picture here is very similar to, to, to the one in the original paper by, by Nigel. So you have complex connections on a smooth complex vector bundle. If the manifold is complex, then you get a, a hyperkeller uh, a hyperkeller uh, um, moment map by taking the, the action of the unitary gauge group and three natural symplectic structures. So the the complex moment map, what gives you, what the complex moment map gives you is precisely this Hormite Einstein equation. So this can be regarded as, as the complex moment map for the connection DG. So this is the series of the complex moment map for in this hyperkeller uh, moment map reduction. And this new equation is the kth moment map. So this is IJ moment maps. And then the case moment map is, is precisely this, this one here. Okay, so what, we, what can you prove with this? Well, the theorem is that this is related to some stability condition, which is a bit weird. And I, I, I love to, to know more about it and also to discuss with, with you about it. So assume that you have a solution of the halle strominger equations with this balance class, and then take the orthogonal bundle and the associated metric and churn connection. Then assume further that these solutions admits a, a harmonic metric with the previous definition. Then for every isotropic coherence of shift of Q, which is preserved by the connection DG, one has that the degree of F with respect to the balance class needs to be smaller or equal than zero. And there is actually a version of this using polystability, but uh, this, is, uh, well, this is enough for the purposes of this talk. Okay, so one comment before I go into the proof, one important comment is that this connection DG, as you will see in the next slide, actually depends fully on the solution of the equations. So it's a, it's a bit, uh, this, this stability condition is a bit schizophrenic. So it, it, you need a solution to, to, to define it. Actually, the connection depends on the solution, and but you are expecting this is related somehow to the existence, right? But this seems to be, this doesn't seem to be a causal thing, a casual thing. Actually, there are other instances of canonical metrics in non killer geometry where you have the same phenomenon. And this is related to some work I did with Jeff Streets and, and Josh Jordan. Anyway, so how do, you, how do you prove this? This is very similar to, to the proof for Higgs bundles. Instead of decomposing uh, DG as before, you decompose it using the churn connection of H plus a one zero form with values in endomorphisms. Then you realize that the harmonic equation gives you this uh, sort of uh, hitching equation for H and phi. And then you apply the same proof as in Hitching system fixture for, for Higgs bundle. So you take some um, complement, um, some, some big open set of, of big co-dimension where your coherence shift is actually a holomorphic vector bundle. Take this equality here, traces, integrate, and get some, some inequality in the, in the churn classes. Okay, so how much time do I have, or it's over? It's over? Okay, so yeah, I wanted to show you one example, but maybe if you ask, that's, that's fine. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention.
Any questions? Uh, thank you for your talk and uh, all this nice work with students. And uh, the um, <clears throat> I'm sort of confused about seeing this two, the role of the two uh, bundles, V0 and V1. Uh, I don't know what is the fundamental role of having two bundles. Of course, you can have N bundles, but you can group them and so on. But uh, what is, um, if one of them was just, wasn't there? I mean, do you still have a theory or? Yeah, so. What, what is, why would you have that? Yeah, this is interesting. Actually, it relates to some old observation by physicists. So mm -hmm. suppose all, all the complication of, of the things we have been talking about come from the fact that you have solutions with V0 bundle. So what happens if, if the V0 bundle were not there? So if you drop these terms, then this is the first way that physicists try to construct supergravity theories. In, uh, in this is an old work by, by Chaplin and Manton that was, was revisited afterwards by, by Witten, Candela, Sorovica, and Strominger. And they prove that if you have solutions without the V0 bundle, the only solutions are killer in the term they have zero flux and the gauge connection is flat. And actually you can prove this in by our means, because you see, if you have a solution without the V0 bundle, what happens is that you have that this G metric is positive definite. Therefore, this Q is polystable. But I told you before that this Q has always a canonical isotropic of shift given by the holomorphic cotangent bundle. And then what you prove is that this Q is a split, and this automatically implies that your metric is scalar and the Hermitian metric is flat. So in order to have an interesting theory, you really need to have these, these differences of term classes, which is kind of... Uh, I'm curious because when I see two bundles, two vector bundles, I cannot resist to link them with a Higgs field, right? A homomorphism from one to the other. Uh, can you incorporate that into some equations that, I mean, could be uh, well, the Strominger Higgs equations because there would be some extra Oh yeah, of course. yeah, of course. Does you... it does it does it have any physical meaning or any interesting? Okay, so one thing you can do is to, if you go back to this moment map interpretation of the equations, one thing you can do is to consider a, a version of the equations for real groups, and this is this follows just from the from the picture that we have, and I think in if taking reductions to maximum convert probably gives you some version some Higgs version of the equations that we are considering here. So I, I guess the answer is yes that you can. Naturally. But I'm not thinking of real groups. Just just add to your uh, data uh, homomorphism between you know from v0 to v1, let's say, and then you get some equations that in, I mean instead of the Hermitian Einstein there, you would probably get equations well, that involve. Let me Higgs field. so actually the the way the Higgs field uh, uh, appears here is, is a bit different. So what happens? This is an example of a solution of these equations. The bundle can be identified with the tangent plus the real plus plus the real, so the two copies of R. And then, in for a particular choice of of a Hermitian metric, you have these harmonic metrics. And actually, the the Higgs field, rather than exchanging the two bundles, takes sections of one of these copies of R to the tangent bundle, and and vice versa. These are orthogonal, so it needs to be so. I haven't seen, uh, so part of the data, in, at least in these examples, part of the data, one of the bundles is incorporated in the, in the NABLA H connection, in the unitary connection, part of, in, and the other bundle is, is playing a role for the definition of the, of the Higgs field. But I don't, a priori, I don't see how to. Thank you. Well, maybe just a comment. In the original question you wrote down, one of the bundles was the tangent bundle. Oh, is that right? In the original talk? Yeah, yeah. So in, for physicists and also in, in most of the literature about Halle-Strominger equations, uh, people take V0 to be the tangent bundle of, of X. There is a discussion of whether you should, this should be the tangent bundle as a holomorphic bundle or just, just the topology should be, should be equal. But uh, all the things I have said uh, work equally well for, for this more general setup. So I think this is, I mean, if, if you want to, to understand like, general features of the theory, I think it's worth to, to make it more flexible. And then you have a, many more examples and uh, more, more room. Yeah. Physics might want the tangent bundle for some other reason. Yeah, yeah. Physics want, want the tangent bundle 
because they want the right degrees of freedom of the three. If you if you actually they want the tangent bundle and they they say that there is secretly the Cheron connection of this H zero is is related to the other fields and it's not an, a, a a degree of freedom of the three. And I think this is one of the reasons why why they want that. So uh, when you try to understand this. Uh, the geometry underlying these equations, you realize that if you do not freeze, if you do not free these parameters coming from the B0 bundle, then nothing works. So I, I don't know what to say about what, what they want. Okay. Um, perhaps we should uh, stop stop there and, and ask for more questions to the speaker later. Let's thank Mark again. Thank you.